What made the Jedi of the Old Republic so incredibly powerful? Way more powerful when compared to the Clone Wars era Jedi and the era of the High Republic, the Classic Republic, and more. The Old Republic Jedi were extremely special when it came specifically to the ways of combat. In the year 3653 BBY, Coruscant would be sacked by Darth Malgus, and the Jedi Temple would fall into ruin. It was one of the most tragic events in the Jedi's history, and it left the Jedi Order completely without a home, especially after the Republic informed the Jedi that they wouldn't be repairing the temple anytime soon. After this, a ceasefire would stop the fighting between the Republic and Sith, ushering in a Cold War. But after 10 years, when the Cold War finally ended, the Jedi would return far stronger than ever before, swiftly crushing Imperial opposition on various battlefronts and even wiping out many independent oppositions such as Malgus's own Sith Empire. The militaristic Jedi of the Old Republic had somehow gotten even more powerful after the destruction of their temple on Coruscant and it was all thanks to one Jedi Grandmaster, a descendant of Revan and Bastila Shan. That Grandmaster was Satil Shan. So what happened to the Jedi Order during this 10-year Cold War period, and how did they return even more powerful than the Old Republic Jedi that came before? Well, it's time to open a holocron and find out what we consider to be the most powerful era of Jedi to have ever lived in Legends continuity. To understand this, we have to establish what the Jedi were like previously to Satil Shan. Constant war had forged the Jedi into military geniuses, and they were already starting to reach the apex of their power during the 28-year-long conflict that was the first wave of the Great Galactic War. When the Sith Empire returned, the Republic and the Jedi were caught completely off guard, and their forces were crushed by the Sith pretty quickly. But as the war raged on, the Jedi honed their skills in battle, they trained in lightsaber combat more and more, and became deadly specialists with various kinds of weaponry. They also began experimenting more and more with the combative uses of the Force. As we've seen such as Jedi Master Ven Zalo and Cal Senderic, these Jedi knew what they were doing when they got on the battlefield. By constantly cutting their skills against other Force wielders, they were gaining much more experience in the Force and in lightsaber combat with how often they fought against the Sith and their rivals. Since the war lasted an inordinate amount of time, there was an entire generation of Jedi raised in the temple who knew nothing but conflict and war. These Jedi would be the greatest battle experts in the history of the Order, which was why the war with the Sith Empire reached a screeching halt. They had stalemated the ferocious Sith army. The warriors had met their match against the equally fierce Jedi Knights created in the fires of the battlefield. And finally, the Sith concocted a dastardly plan befitting their talents and betrayal, calling for negotiations of peace on the world of Alderaan. The then Grand Master, Satil Shan's master, as well as Satil, would rendezvous with the Sith as well as Republic representatives on the world, hoping to forge a treaty of peace. However, the Sith would stab the Republic in the back, launching a surprise attack on the Republic capital of Coruscant. This was the event that led to the sacking of the Temple, the death of the Supreme Chancellor, and the destruction of the Jedi Temple. The Grand Master was forced to agree to the terms laid out by the Sith Empire in order to achieve a ceasefire, and thus, the Cold War began. Enraged at these actions, and distressed at how they were having to leave countless systems to suffer under Sith oppression, Satil Shan would strike off on her own, leaving in a ship. Satil set off for the stars, having felt a call from the Force in the Great Beyond. During this time, the Grand Master known as Zim would pass on leaving the Jedi without a home and without a Grand Master. Only the High Council was in charge in this period, and the Jedi became nomads. To make matters worse, the Republic could not afford to rebuild the Temple, sending all their money to relief efforts. But after two years, Satil Shan would follow the call of the Force until she found an abandoned hyperlane, one which led to the Deep Core. After traveling through it, she would make a history-changing discovery. Shatil Shan discovered the ancestral homeworld of the Jedi, Tython. Reporting this to the High Council, they immediately appointed her the rank of Master and gave her a position on the High Council. Following this, the Jedi picked up and would move back to Tython as they discovered a world which was broken, dangerous, and wild. But ultimately, the Force accepted them as the planet remembered them, welcoming the Jedi home. 
After five years, Satil Shan would be appointed to the rank of Grand Master, and she led the Jedi in a period of fasting and meditation in the Force, seeking guidance on their next steps. They came across the foundations of the ancient Jedi Temple and decided to build their own new temple upon it. Satil ordered that they construct their temple only out of the available lumber of Titan's forests, but under Satil's direction, they deliberately changed the architecture from the design of Coruscant. This was to follow their ideals of non-attachment. The destruction of their old home had traumatized many of the Jedi, and the Council knew they needed to re-establish the way of the Jedi themselves. Their home wasn't a temple, it was the Order and the Force itself. The new design was intended to echo the style of Alderaan's famous castles and to evoke the virtues of humility, serenity, and patience. The Jedi had grown too confident in their abilities in warfare, and the Jedi recognized that all of their new skills had made them lose sight of how the Force was meant to be studied, and this lesson in humility. The war had unbalanced the Jedi, the very hearts of the Order, and they needed to release their attachment and find peace. This was the lesson in Serenity. They all knew that the war would be back on soon enough, and that the Sith were going to be ready to eliminate them. And knowing this, the Jedi wanted to strike back harder than ever, to show the Sith a power that they couldn't possibly comprehend. And the Jedi studied, and the Jedi evolved. They opened their ear to the Force. This was their lesson in Patience. The Temple supplied everything the Jedi needed, and while they were on Titan, the Jedi would reconnect with the roots of the Order, growing stronger because of it. And this is where it gets very good. Satil Shan was nearly the perfect Grand Master for this period of time. Satil spent her life and age from 18 to 46 in non-stop war with the Sith Empire. When she became Grand Master at the age of 50, she had seen the power of the dark side and experienced the horrors of the Sith and war. When she was in the chair, she dropped all dogma and told the Jedi to go wild, to study the Force, as long as they remained in the light side, but to expand upon its mysteries. Tython was the best place in the galaxy for them to do so. The Force was there, untamed, powerful, pure, wild. The Jedi developed and mastered new abilities, such as Force Freeze, using the Force to lower the atmospheric temperature in order to freeze an opponent in a solid case of ice. An average Jedi Consular of this era had the ability to create micro-earthquakes and easily fling pounds upon pounds of debris at an opponent with little drain of their energy. It even got to the point where Jedi Sentinels experimented heretofore banned techniques and were allowed to master Form 7 lightsaber combat while using the light side, something that has never happened in the Jedi Order before or been allowed since. All of this was due to Grand Master Satil Shan, granting the Jedi their permission to dive deeply into the Force, collect as much knowledge and experience as possible. Of course, this ran the risk of the Jedi turning to the dark side in this tumultuous era, and many of this time period actually did. But many of the dark Jedi that arose were quickly beaten back by the absolute power of the Jedi of this order, and they kept moving forward in their advancements. When the war began, the Jedi were no longer stalemated. When armies collided, the Jedi quickly proved just how powerful they had become. The Jedi were more decisive, and the Jedi Order developed heroes which swiftly crushed Sith opposition. The Jedi Order would bring Malgus to justice, and all uprisings were quelled. Satil Shan made the decision to change the Jedi. They were going to stop letting things bother or hinder them for the time being, and to keep moving forward no matter what. If a Jedi was embracing the dark side, they were taken care of, either killed or rehabilitated but it didn't slow down the progress. If some local uprising, crime lord, or whatever was hindering the Jedi's movement in the system, they would be dealt with swiftly. Despite how dark this may sound, the Jedi were very much remaining in the light. The difference was that they had become resolute. They were done playing games with the Sith, and were now opening themselves up to the full capabilities of what the Force had to offer, no longer limiting it in their own minds. Just like her ancestor Revan did, Satil Shan showed wisdom in revealing to the High Council just how powerful the Jedi were capable of becoming, power that was always available to them, a great era of exploration, and an era built in war originally, but hardened with peace, serenity, and justice.
At no other point in history had things become so desperate as to require this kind of action. But now that Valkorion and the Eternal Empire were making an appearance, it was desperate that the Jedi be at their absolute pinnacle, without compromising what it meant to wield the light side, and without compromising their code. We are often hard-pressed to find any other point in the timeline where the Jedi are as willing to express their powers in the Force. This may not align perfectly with the Peacekeeper mindset that the Jedi attempt to maintain, but when they want to be, the Jedi have the capability of becoming frighteningly powerful. But of course, that would never happen under a weak or a hesitant Grand Master. But now, what do you think of the Jedi of this era and Satil Shan? Do you believe the Jedi should have maintained this level of power within the Force? Or do you think that it was dangerous? And do you think that they should have left it alone once the war ended? Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments down below, and what we believe to be the most powerful era of Jedi, with the only real rivals being Luke Skywalker's Jedi Order. But Satil and Luke have a lot in common as Grand Masters. As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the archives today, and may the Force be with you.